your dog or cat has a lump, like Pippi's here, you want to know if it's serious or not, you need to worry. Find out exactly what you need to know in this video. Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. Uh, before I get going too far in this video, after the video finishes, I'd love for you to click the link in the box below and you check out my new Patreon page. Life is hard here in the Jones residence. Pippi. 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 Pippi has come here to visit. She's hanging out for a few days. Well, part of her family is off somewhere else. Pippi's pretty, pretty happy being here. She just so happens to have this fairly big lump that's been here for about, and according to her owner, George, you know, four or five years. It's been, it's been a few years. Now he's generally concerned about it. You know, is it serious or not? Should I be, you know, doing something more than just waiting and watching? I think it's a great example for you guys to learn from as far as how I would sort of assess a lump, make the decision if it's serious or not, whether you should be like rushing off to your vat, having surgery, or you can just wait and watch. So, Pippi's lump is... So it's a moderately sized, movable lump sitting here over top of her right carpus or her right wrist. There it is there, little pipster. So here's the criteria I would use to gauge whether or not the serious or not, whether you should be rushing off to the vet, having surgery or not. First of all, with any lump, I mean, the biggest thing is starting with the history. How long has it been here? You know, when did you first notice it? Um, it gives you a good sense of, has it just been, you know, has it been a few weeks? Um, has it been several months? Has it been years? This has been years, which is generally a good sign. It's been there a long time. It hasn't grown massively. My second gauge would be assessing, you know, just how quickly is this growing? So yeah, we know Pippi's lump here. It's been previously measured. Um, yeah, it's about, you know, two by two centimeters, you know, say about you know, three quarters of an inch by about half an inch. Um, I last measured that a year ago. It hasn't really grown much since then. So that's another real big gauge that I would assess any lump. How quickly is this lump growing? You know, is it growing quite rapidly? Obviously a big cause for concern. Or relatively slow growing makes it means it's much more likely to be a benign lump. Maybe, maybe it's a cyst. Generally something less serious. And in most of those cases, though, those don't require surgery and urgent veterinary care. No, Pippi's not drugged. She's just like beyond relaxed. And apparently she likes the couch. The third thing we want to discuss is, you know, how does that lump feel? So grab a hold of it and I want you to feel a couple different things. First of all, is it soft or is it hard? Pippi's fairly soft. Generally, the softer is a pretty good sign. Often that can mean something more benign, such as a lipoma, which is the, these benign fatty tumors, which is what I believe she's got here. Moving. Does it move? So what I mean by that is, if is the lump movable at all? So if you're gonna grab onto the lump, can you move it around? If it's firmly attached to the base of the skin, that's underneath this base of the skin, that's generally more serious. The lumps that are easily movable, they're the ones that are generally benign. The ones that are really firmly attached, you know, underneath the base of the skin, they're, they're the ones that are more serious. Fifth, you know, where is it? Where is this lump at? Um, typically things like lipomas, they're more common to occur along the side of the chest wall, especially in our medium and larger breed dogs. And um, Pippi's a lab, she loves food. I expect would expect her to have a, a lipoma or two, but there are these benign, benign fatty growths. So where, uh, wherever there is these fat cells or lipocytes. But as a sort of benign veterinary rule, generally the cysts, uh, the lipomas, they typically occur along the body walls, you know, so on the side, maybe in the back of Pippi's head, um, the size, size of her thorax, size of her abdomen, maybe up here towards her rear. 
um, less commonly occurring on the limbs. Um, for whatever I found in veterinary practice, more often than not, some of these lumps that would occur on the, occur on the limbs um, tended to be more serious. Then lastly, how does this lump look in terms of, is it closed? You know, such as Pippi has here in her leg, you know, it's closed over the skin, it hasn't ruptured, it's not oozing anything. Um, generally, that's a better sign too. Um, some of these more serious, you know, growths, you know, such as mast cell tumors, for instance, that are not uncommon to occur in the skin. Um, often they'll open up and rupture, they can be red, oozing and weeping. And that's more common a sign of something more serious. <laughs> the last thing I want to discuss were the cysts. Um, very common are these things called sebaceous cysts. Any of you have got a cyst, you know what I mean. Um, more common in our dogs, and, and less common, but also in our cats, is a, this is just a gland that's producing a type of oily material that provides kind of a nice, kind of nice shine to your dog, your cat's um, hair coat. And these glands can actually plug right up. Um, when they do plug up, they're not secreting their oil that they should be. And then the only way for that stuff to come out, that oil, is it kind of rupture in the surface of the skin. But if that's the case, your dog or cat's gonna have almost this cheesy-like material coming onto the lump. Pretty common. If that's what you're seeing, most likely you're dealing with a sebaceous cyst. Thanks so much, you guys, for watching this edition of Energy Secrets. I hope you found it somewhat helpful, give you better sort of guidance as far as determining whether, you know, a lump is serious or not. Can you wait and watch, or do you need to rush off to your vet? And by all means, you're not sure, go ahead and see your veterinarian. I gotta thank Pippi for being so tolerant. Pippi, my God. She's just, it's like a day spa here. <laughs> and once again, if you've yet to do so, I'd love for you to, first of all, click the link above. Um, to subscribe to my channel. Click the link just off right below and you can sign up for notifications. When you click the link further in the box below and you sign up for my newsletter, I can send you my free books and my free videos on how to heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies.